afternoon guys well it's been a while since I've been back in the workshop or videoed in the workshop for everybody so I'm it's exciting today I'm gonna to hopefully address a few issues which people have diagnosing sores and why they won't start and predominantly the main issue is for a lot of people is the side which is almost a bit like a black art which is the electrics so they don't spark and I had a load of questions recently particularly about some of my project saws where they where I've done an initial test and they don't spark and people interpret that sometimes as ah, the coil's broken that's why it doesn't spark you know it's broken and so but I'm going to hopefully answer all those questions today and hopefully it'll be really really interesting also as we work through some of my techniques for looking at an old engine and establishing where the problem is and you know, I've been really fortunate I've met so many great people with so many amazing skill sets through my working life and you know when we train at school and then we go on to if we go on to further education or we do something else you know some people are spectacular at numbers some people are great at drawing some people are mechanically minded some people are spectacular with electronics and they just take to that other people are just good at everything so what if you're a person which is fantastic mechanically really really proficient but when it comes to if somebody said you know if you check the impedance or if you checked the resistance of your primary and secondary windings on the coil and you might start to think okay I'm perhaps I don't feel comfortable you may not have access to a multimeter you may never have used a multimeter and they then start talking about other aspects of the coils you know interestingly some old coils set within the resin or within the within the body of the coil are some intricate electrics electrical circuits which used to advance and retard timing on some of the early engines incredible so I'm going to show you a way to test the coil with no other knowledge and on some of the early ones it won't even require a multimeter and at the same time I hope to answer a few questions so I'm going to pull out one of my saws and this saw then is the McCulloch 172 early 60s saw has been stirred as far as I was told for over 30 years has been pulled over with good compression or definitely reasonable compression what you tend to find on old engines I certainly find that on a load of my beautiful old Clintons if they've been sat stationary for 25 30 years maybe longer or less the piston rings as you might a lot of you will know they'll stick in to the grooves on the piston and then they just perhaps won't develop compression until they've freed off so that girl then the 172 I did the video maybe two two weeks ago when I brought her in from outside she's then sat up on the shelf it's not been touched since so we're going to take her as a working example and we're going to kill a few birds with one stone so to speak right then Okay, the McCulloch, the 172. So when I'm serious about diagnosing or problem solving an old saw, then 101, the first thing, absolutely before anything else, make sure your workbench is clear, make sure it is clean, and make sure you have access to several really essential bits of kit and one of those is cleanup materials so I can't stress it enough and when we work through it it'll start to make more and more sense so old engines well fuel in general is we don't want it on our hands we don't want to be breathing in the fumes and we don't want it to be covered in it because for the most part it's carcinogenic 
So we don't want skin complaints and interestingly petrol molecules are between nine and ten times smaller than water molecules so when you start touching certain certain liquids when they feel cold to the touch you know they're going in we don't want that and so if you don't feel comfortable wearing some of the really really high quality gloves you can get we still have they're still great tactile feel they'll be great when you use them um i use the touch and tough gloves they're superb but if i'm using i'm doing intricate work then any decent barrier cream get that on your hands first before you start workbench clear you're going to be good to go right then we won't struggle with this girl so we're going to get the bar and the chain off her so she's a bit more manageable and i have a selection of tools out as well today and you might wonder why i've got two impact wrenches out and for a very very good reason and one probably isn't going to be used and the second one almost certainly is going to be used so a lot of you would have seen some of the baby quarter inch chuck impact hand wrenches um, this one of the Hikoki ones formerly Hitachi 36 volt fantastic for small fasteners and work like that and then this is the bigger sister I use these in car garages so can generate about 1800 newton meters of torque and formidable formidable piece of kit but there's electronic trigger control which ramps up the force but because of the weight within the gearing and the mechanism it's incredibly useful for testing so i'll show you that in a minute maybe we'll see how we get on with the rest of it okay let's get the side cover off. So I've just brought out a few of my common size English fittings, which hopefully will be one of these. It's not that one. Is it the 916th? There we go, 916th. Right. Yeah, so it's interesting how many times if you're on a project you can become unstuck by by just something which you know mechanically you can, people can be brilliant and then the smallest problem on an electrical circuit could stop you from fixing a beautiful beautiful old engine so this is going to be very interesting on this particular saw um, so while I'm taking this apart let's talk about ignition coils just for a minute or two so ignition coils are really very very simple things by them in their if you take them as a standalone um, piece of equipment they really are really quite simple okay you know guys the other thing i like to have on the table if i'm working on a, a project and we may not be taking enough screws off to make this relevant but always have a tray handy then whenever you need to go back you know you're always everything you've taken off your pride and joy is in a tray okay guide plates i may have touched on this last time mcculloch on their old saws have a very very interesting um, tensioning system with the, a crescent shaped tensioner it's really very very elegant Okay. As I say, it's great to have workshop bench space. So you can just put things so they're still to hand, but you're not working on top of them, placing your tool on top of them. And this beautiful old chain. Okay. Right. So I did. I put barrier cream on before. We'll just give a quick wipe off. fabulous okay so ignition coils then primary windings secondary windings and literally when people say ignition coil and I know probably 99% of you might know it you have a steel or an iron core typically made up in plates for very good reason but again no technical details are necessary today we don't need to understand any of its function other than we just need to know 
what we're going to do to test it. So we don't need to do anything technical, but primary windings, you tend to have a thicker, what well you do is a thicker coil, it's a thicker coil of copper wound around this iron core, it's resin coated, so it doesn't short itself out. And then around that is the secondary winding and the, the copper wire is, it's almost like strands of hair where it's so fine, still resin coated and you have a small number of windings on the inside and a massive number of windings of the thinner copper wire on the outside and that ratio uplifts the voltage which gets which gets induced by spinning a magnet which is on the flywheel past those coils okay take off this side here maybe It's a, a really elegant, I really like the access here as well. So on this particular McCulloch, you take off one screw on the right hand side, bolts into the top of the muffler, you pull it across and then it hinges back and then gives you access to the spark plug on this side. So when we get a bit closer in, we'll zoom in and it'll be, well, it'll be really interesting what we find. And have I jumped two stages? Possibly. Two incredible pieces of test equipment you might find are invaluable to have. Are, and even if you don't agree with or wanting to fit them afterwards, I have found them to be such a handy workshop aid. And they are some of the little switching modules or transistor modules which replace points and condensers on old engines. Now, they don't work on all engines, and again, there's going to be some empirical knowledge there, and there's going to be some trial and error if you have particularly old engines and you're unable to replace certain points in condensers. But they have another fantastic function. So the points in condenser just literally gives it enough charge to your primary winding on the coil to jump across arc and then ignite your petrol. So if you have a spark, you have compression, you have a petrol mixture with air, those three combinations, this engine's gonna fire. These are intriguing. So I don't remember what the setup is inside here, but I'll, I'll show you exactly how I use them for diagnosing an old engine. Okay, so we've released. Now we're gonna take off the side cover. while I'm taking this off then. So the impact wrenches, the smaller impact wrenches, because of their the size and the momentum they have, if you need to use them for turning something other than undoing a small fastener, they will very, very quickly go into impact mode and start shocking the heads of the nuts and bolts, which is what they're designed for. Okay, off nice and clean. But if you wish to use it as a turning tool to help you diagnose something, which in this case I'm going to hopefully use it to spin the engine, we definitely don't want the hammer functioning. And for that you're going to need a bigger gun, and you're going to need a bigger gun with more torque that we can electronically ramp up, and it will just overcome the internal resistance of rotating without using the hammer effect. So we're not trying to undo anything, but we just we have the pull cover off and we want to diagnose it. Okay. Here we are then, little flywheel governor here, to, as the revs ramp up. Um, right, so, coil looks in reasonable condition. And so part of my test equipment today is just the common things. One wire with a bullet connection, one wire with a spade. You're going to find one of those combinations, unless perhaps on some of the old steels where they, um, the wires which come out from the trigger, perhaps on some of like the, the 50, well actually on some of the 51s, the 76s, actually multiple saws, uh, the 56s, they would, just, the trigger wire is actually soldered directly into the coil. So for those, if, if that was like that, I have my cutters here, we would cut it and then test it that way. But very interestingly then, 
this girl has two bullet connectors on the back of the on the back of the coil okay so we do a visual inspection of the coil looks pretty good no apparent damage to the cap okay so the first thing I would do if I'm testing unplug if you can disconnect the kill switch it's incredible how many machines fail to spark just because of a faulty kill switch so that's incredibly handy on this one we can actually just disconnect the bullet connector now the kill switch is off right let's pull the plug older style plug another essential piece of equipment to have and just certain things just don't skimp okay one brand new plug all the time just keep one plug you don't you don't run test it initially know that it's perfect and then just keep it as test equipment so that for certain engines you always always are going to have a plug you don't have to think oh is that one okay or is that plug right then let's check the size of the flywheel nut that guys that is yeah. next one up there. There. perfect there we're gonna need an adapter which is there to use that, that. Okay. All right, guys. So let's test this girl again. I'm going to just walk around to the camera to make sure that it's zoomed in. And we're going to test it together. This will be very, very interesting. zoomed in pretty well we're going to put our impact wrench on the flywheel nut no spark hopefully that's clear on the camera move it around a bit let's go once more we'll increase the rpm Okay guys, so exactly as before, completely completely dead in that regard, no spark. So the dilemma then is is it a broken condenser? Is it just the points cleaning or is the coil actually broken? And so when I was talking to you before about the windings of the coil, they really are really really simple simple pieces of equipment it's just it's just copper windings and so if there's no other electronics inside how on earth does that actually break 
So one of the problems they tend to have or can have is if they have an ingress of water in over time, then they get hot and then they contract, they can swell and then crack. So that's a possibility. But if they've been off the ground and this one's been off the ground in a workshop and it's been dry, they're pretty robust. And so if you don't have a flywheel puller and you want to test this, what we're going to do then is we will disconnect the condenser and the points. And we're really, really fortunate on this model. Actually, this is a great model. Um, that's just points and condenser are, wow, amazingly, they're just disconnected with the bullet connector. Okay, so we will, I've had lots of success testing coils with the Sigma. So we'll start with the Sigma. If we have no joy with that, we'll move on to the Nova, the Nova 2, and which is a two wire system. We're going to start with the single wire system and see how we go. So bullet connector, well, it's going to be a very, very quick test actually. Um, bullet connector in. We'll have a spade connector on the back of, of our sender switch. The zoom is on. Let's just pinch that down so we get a really tight fit. It seems to be very interesting, guys, because this. Colics have such a, a beautiful reputation. Okay, there we go. And what are we looking at there? That's a 10 mil by the look of it. Or uh, is that that? So we'll mount it off one of the coil points. That's tight. Okay. Okay. So one thing I found I had to do with my ignition senders was typically lots of components which go underneath the flywheel, you'll find they're geared up for three mil or four mil threads. And when you come to mount one of these, there's really nothing around the chassis which is three or four mil external to the electronics or the electrics. So. I've just run these through with a five and a half mil bit, so then it should. Let me just mount it conveniently somewhere. And these work really, really well in close proximity to the coil. And so mounting it on the coil, I know that I'm not adding too much electrical resistance anywhere. So if there's any chance of this working, we're gonna do it today. Right. What we do then is use one of their simple wire twisters. It's like a plastic cap with a female coarse thread in it. And then you push the wires in, twist them. And for this test today, I wouldn't run an engine like it, but for this test today, there we have it. We have rigged up a Sigma. So, when I put the glasses on then, I just noticed there's a hairline crack in the housing of the coil. So this could actually have a coil problem, but what this will do, but also that plastic is brittle, you might just find that's just cracked over time. But this will be very, very interesting indeed. So here we go then, first time together. So we're gonna run this with a Sigma and let's see if this door actually sparks with it around so you guys can see it hopefully oh that's a pretty good spot there right I'll zoom in again
Well, what do we think? Are we confident or so it's strange? I would say I would say we're 50-50. Seeing that crack in the coil, but who knows? Oh wow! Okay. And not just wow, I hope that's clear guys. That's fantastic news then. Okay. Let's turn it around. Let me just see if I can zoom in a bit more for you guys. So once more. So in many regards, this is so much easier as well than stripping off the flywheel and risking any damage to it. Wow. Absolutely sensational. So, fantastic. Right, let's zoom back out. So I hope that came out well on the the video for people to see. So no need for us to go back to, to trying the the Nova module because that's wow what a beautiful bright blue spark. Sixty years old and in a matter of what did that take us with me over talking at the same time has that taken perhaps 10 minutes maybe to take the bar off isolate the kill switch well actually because it's um double bullet connection i'll just put the kill switch back in now i'm going to test the kill switch how invaluable is it really to be able to test like this so this is one of these huge, huge advantages of having of having one of the fantastic heavy duty impact wrenches, which you can configure the torque on and you don't get the impact wrench to cut in, but you can still use the momentum. So lots of coils need up to uh, between 1500 and 1800 RPM rotational speed on some engines to generate a spark and typically spark plugs operate in a range of uh, 12,000 to 25,000 volts and theoretically depending upon certain engines they go into they can run up to 45,000 volts that's in a, in a in a spark plug environment so so this would be operating anywhere between 12 and 25,000 volts that's a really bright blue spark so we'll test it again Fantastic. Kill switch working perfectly and as I shorten then I got a little spark off the um <laughs> off the chassis. So fantastic spark. All right guys. You know what's coming next then, don't you? So what we'll do is we will thread that cable back through there just temporarily. We will. Again, one of my favourite bench things is a is the priming bottle, just with a chainsaw filter in the base. One of the heavy ones with the weight in lets me just prime without getting fuel everywhere. Just give it a lovely and smooth running. Okay. Put the plug in. So there you go. So although she's not sparking with the points and the condenser set up, the coil is giving a spectacular spark. And that, although that doesn't actually mean that that, that coil is perfect, that could still break down under when it gets hot. It could, in reality, it could break down when it's hot. But certainly, the condition of that spark is is excellent and right.
let us try something fun. Let's put that on there. Okay. Bye. So you can see the attraction of these of these electronic modules, and there's some there's some great vendors on on eBay where I've had um, multiples for testing and they've just been invaluable so now if I if I wanted to work on this and tackle this as a project I already now have the great knowledge that if I either clean up the points to a sufficient standard and the condenser is okay then this is definitely definitely going to spark and fire and then that just leaves me the fueling system to look at right so let's pull the trigger up put that in right let's take this off just in case we need to prime a little bit more so they're unusual the McCulloch, these 172 so I don't know if they're supposed to have a throttle lock I couldn't see it on this one it's the first 172 I've had and so I don't know if it's doesn't appear to be uh, linked with the with the choke mechanism and it all looks complete so uh, if any of you guys know I'd love to hear that we'll just do a A baby prime through the carb as well. Wow, I wonder when the last time this girl had fuel running through her. Incredibly clean. Came from a really lovely guy. Um, fuel switch. Okay, guys, let's see if uh, if she has anything at all. Invaluable as well. Old engines. It's just a way of strapping the the throttle trigger into a a fully open position or wide open throttle. If the old engines didn't have throttle lock, or if if it has throttle lock but it's broken. Okay, let's try again. Wow. <laughs> She fires and runs, popping and um, popping and wheezing. So I goodness knows what condition the uh, the carburetor is in. And <laughs> deposits of <laughs> black soot coming out. Okay. Well, hard to get a better test than that. That's fantastic. All right. So. Yeah, so that does in fact answer multiple questions all at the same time then about the about the McCulloch as well. So um, do I know the core's broken? No, the core is definitely not broken. <laughs> the core the core's firing incredibly. And yeah, so core's working. No, I haven't taken off the flywheel. So you know if if somebody does buy this as a project, then hopefully that's an even nicer starting point now as well. But also it's really to show people the value of having some really great test equipment modules for testing old coils invaluable equipment to turn the crank or the flywheel over without having to put the pull start housing back on invaluable 
this can be really useful to to learn how to use a multimeter but we haven't needed to switch it on and we know that actually with that running then and popping um, she's not far away from working perfectly so okay guys hope that's interesting so there's the beautiful McCulloch then 172 and although not actually sparking with the points and condenser with one of the modules on is <laughs> actually runs <laughs> incredibly there we go and little aids as ridiculous as they might look there you go just for holding the throttle open just to do something which if you're not able to do it like on a workbench and hold it and pull just little things like this can just make a huge difference love to hear any comments guys and on some other engines it's interesting one module works and one doesn't I found so perhaps we'll need to find um, one of my older pioneer engines and then show you the difference it has on the on the ignition and the timing because of course all of these have um, just like when you have your points opening at a certain point and the timing is set by the key on the flywheel and you may be able to rotate the stator plate to alter the timing these obviously are all set at a at a preset point for ignition and so on some engines you find that it actually helps them gives you more rpm and on some you might find it hinders them but so i don't know which way around that is for the for the mcculloch all i know is it's wow she's up and running or she's ready for somebody to give her some love now and, and get her back up and running Guys, thanks for watching. More videos soon. Bye for now.